Uh, do, 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 make a concentration check. Sure. Mm hmm. All right, uh, Allura casts a spell. She definitely feels like something is a little bit off when she does it. Uh, it is as, you know, some sort of outside force is sort of trying to s supersede her spell somehow, but she regains control uh, over most of it, and uh, the water conjures up and sort of splashes to the ground. I can tell the others that it seems some outside force is, will attempt to hijack whatever spells we cast here. Uh, so that was with water, would that seem? I would suggest against using any more of those. The only problem would be dehydration, but uh, I don't think, at least I certainly haven't been relying on a uh, spellcaster to provide water. Oh no, Elinary's dead. We'll never make it back in time. We're dead. Ah. Well, we, ha we have two spell cards to create water, but. Oh, no, so much Linaria water. And Dark, I've died to a cave been using it to, She's been using it to fill up her bottles. Uh, her water skin, but I mean, mm. I, mean I, I have a leave it empty. So yeah, I have a water skin, but I've been refilling it using yeah, great water. Glorious Agaris water. Another reason why uh, <laughs> I don't drink any of that water. <laughs> Water is like like, like Agari's brand. <laughs> yeah, Agari's brand water. It like, has, has like waters a bottle. Of vengeance. <laughs> the waters of vengeance. Waters of vengeance. Drink now from the waters of vengeance. The waters of forbidden knowledge. And, and let the, uh, the the feel of it consume your everything. All right. Exactly. So, I guess you know. Is there any sort of like direction associated with the thing? Is it? It's, I suppose it's getting stronger the further we travel along this path. Yes. Okay then. We'll see what's happened. If there's a lake of salt involved, it might be some sort of embedded, like, ley line, I guess, like, built into the thing, because it's salt. Might have a problem with water. Mm. All right, you press east. Uh, and, yeah, uh, by the end of the day, the fifth day, uh, you come upon uh, what can only be described as a, a, a lake, uh, like a, a natural wonder. Uh, before you stretches out uh, further than you can see, this like bubbling, hissing, like sputtering lake of of like yeah, like boiling, roiling water. Uh, it spits and and like a like a witch's cauldron basically. Um, the the air in here is just reeks of salt. Uh, like and you you can see basically your your skin like you know. Like starting to dry out almost, like it's it's very salty uh, in here, and so the salty water just hisses and fits and just you know throws itself everywhere. Uh, it looks uh, it looks very hot indeed, and temperature rises sharply as you as you stand here on the uh, on the shore of it. You do notice though that from the shore seems to be a um, like a pier built out into the uh, into the lake. Uh, made of what what you would guess is solid, uh, you know, solid bedrock. Uh, however, is it very difficult to see because all the salt crystals are sort of, you know, over the years and years, uh, m like crystallized around this pier leading out. It is completely covered with with white and presumably very pure salt uh, reaching out here. You do see uh, dragged up on the shore close to where you are. Uh, a collection of uh, what seems to be boats uh, made of stone. No shit. Uh, runes, etc., on the boat seem to suggest Dwergar make. Okay. Does the um, does the lake extend from cave wall to cave wall? Like, is there actually a path which leads around it, or is it just like does it cover the entire? It covers the entire. You cannot see it to the other side of it. It right. seems massive. All right. Well, well, there might be something in the middle of this, or on the other side of this, or under this. I am not comfortable with trying to do anything associated with this right now. I look at this, and I see death. Total TPK for every single one of us. <laughs> I'm eating salt. If we dip into that fucking boiling water. Oh, yeah. No, we're yeah. not going to jump in boiling water. That'd be stupid. 
But with, oh, how, with how active stuff. it is, I mean, like, even if you we attempted to take a boat across, I don't fetch it would be easy. A stone boat might get hot by itself. I, I don't think the boat would have so much of a problem. Is It's probably just a little small, like, maybe like a rowboat, Jonas? Uh, let's see here. Battleship. Mm -hmm. no. <laughs> battleship. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a battleship. Damn. Is it a folding boat? No. You do have a folding boat, though. We do. I wouldn't feel comfortable putting that in there, either. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. I thought I'd ask since I remember I had one of my inventory. Yeah, we, we do have the folding boat still, yes, and we held on to it for a just in case measure, but I uh, I, don't, I wouldn't want to risk the entire group dying to this. Uh, in addition, a there's boat, that thing that A boat would hold seven medium sized creatures. Okay. It's not big enough. Uh, uh, it would it would require someone to steer uh, and at least, at least one person to row. Uh, two can row. Yeah, with, with that sort of specification for that, I'm thinking there might be some sort of, like, obstacles in it. We could all very well capsize. Just fucking go flying into the pool. And I don't think resist energy fire would be powerful enough to resist all of that damage. Especially since we're with a group, which some people aren't exactly the best at strength or swimming. Oh, yeah. All areas <laughs> not like in the water. Yeah. But why, why would we want to... Yeah, have that's anything to do with the water? Because there's there's always something out there. Well, yes. Who else would so take why, the time why, to why else would Fire boots? Mountain Games? You know, if you want to go from a meta game standpoint for the adventure for the exploration, which is what we're doing, why would this be here? It's to get into the yeah. fucking players' minds and the little boats like there, like come, come into the lake of boiling water. It's um, as much like it is a uh, chop out a boat of stone. I'm okay to consider. It. It says some commitment to going nowhere. Yeah, but just because the nice man is offering candy doesn't mean you have to take it. Of course it is not. A, it is a it's pampered up uh, courtesan uh, winking flirtatiously over her fan towards you. Uh -huh. Yeah, but that's why we might go out there, because there might be really cool shit like Lake of Salt. I think this was discussed, like, back whenever we learned about this thing. Like, salt's pretty valuable. Oh, which yeah. Which the mention for that. And, you know, and who pure else is salt out there? Is, pure salt is really valuable. And uh, we're going for the situation, like, whatever, hello, Thunder, whatever sort of magical thing might be powerful enough to, like, you know, we don't know whether this is natural, what, what this was come from, what sort of constructed this. This would be of great interest to us, both in securing the kingdom and making the kingdom profit, which is well, why we magic, would be interested. If magic is being affected by something, then that would indicate that whatever is happening here is not natural. Well, magic is a natural part of our world. Yeah. Sheep. Yeah, but um, yeah, <laughs> would, uh, so is would, plastic and <laughs> rubber. Would endure elements do anything for this sort of thing, or is that not powerful enough? Uh, endure elements would perhaps uh, allow you like saves of you know bonus to saves of fortitude if you were to try to pass through. It is very hot and very scalding, and it, it does does look very uncomfortable. Sort of you know trying to sail over this. If you so, stuck your hand in it, would it like scold up and you would take direct damage? Or you uh, you think if you stuck your hand in this, you would be very hurt. Oh, all right. So let's not go there. Let's this is this is. Uh, I mean, it's, it's roiling. Yeah, yeah, you sold it. Let's go back. <laughs> not to, not to see land, this stupid thing, okay? We know this place perhaps sometime in the future with the constant activity. I mean, you, know, you could send Sakari flying out to take a look at whatever's out oh, there. Oh, you keep... I, nev I keep fucking forgetting about the Eidolon capabilities and the fact that it's not a real person. It's not of a bitch. You can fetter it, <laughs> and then you can, you can endure elements it, and then it'll be okay flying because it's not in the damn water. Yeah. I and don't then Strickland can be the eyes of the party. Really great suggestion. Well, yeah. yeah. I like that. Are you gonna enjoy it? I mean, the door. Yeah, she she can. She'll take ten minutes, and then she'll cast into elements on Sakari. Thank you. So he's okay. He doesn't feel uncomfortable flying around. The hot air. Just can look at Sikari in the eyes and think to him, please be careful. <laughs> Sikari swoops out of the salt lake. Is there any sort of evolutionary surge you can give him for like a resistance to fire in case of uh oh? She there is resistance to fire. Okay. Uh there is resistance. Let's see. I don't know how strong it is. I don't think it's a ton you can give him, but it 
If I remember correctly, it's not that powerful. Okay, then discard the idea. I thought it would be of merit. Uh, uh, energy. Give him resistance yeah, 10 you, or something. You could give him, yeah, resistance Resistance, 10, yeah. How much, though? Um, For two points. Five resistance against any energy type. Oh, yeah. How many points it would cost him? It would cost one point, but you can only apply it once, so. Sure. Five resistance, better than nothing. This yeah. resistance increased by five every every five levels. The summoners possesses. Okay. Five is still. Ten, it'll be ten in total. It's five plus five per five levels. Mhm. Mm five plus five per five levels. That's ten then. Yeah. Go. All right. Ten resistance. That's pretty good. Yep. Okay. Sakari. Uh, Sakari swings out. Before he out. leaves, he he will get five resistance. Yes. All right. Sakari swings out, and he can do this for an hour correctly. Before he can, well, he snaps back. Well, he he has the wings yeah. permanently, but it's no. But I mean the fetter. Yeah, yeah he will. He will then at that the point fetter. lose like ninety percent of his his, his head. No, no, at this point he'll be so far away he'll just vanish. Oh yeah. He'll just poof. All right, so Kari swoops out over the lake, uh, and he goes and goes and goes and goes. Uh, he goes for the full hour. Uh, reporting that he only sees boiling, roiling water and, uh, and like, like, yeah, physically salt stings his eyes and his nose, and he feels miserable out here. Bring him back, um, yeah. And then he vanishes. Well, hmm. for for the hour, if you take him all out of sail out there, uh, Lanary doesn't want to go there. She she would be okay with just leaving now. Well, uh, Trishan will use uh, the minute to resummon Sakari. Yeah, I would much prefer at least the treacherous sort of land terrain that we might have to cross in the land of fire rather than <laughs> drowning in fire. <laughs> the, the burning, salty seas of fire? Yeah. Of perhaps magical. The, perhaps using our meta knowledge as players, there might be a time when this calms down or, you know, we're able to make it calm down. Or worst comes to worst, we'll become so fucking powerful that we'll just go, now we'll see. Part the seas. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Mm. Alunari will cast Miracle. Now we'll know what's out here. Control like, water yeah, like and a, survive the concentration. Uh, and to a guard platform with like oil drilling equipment. I am the fury of Arcaris. It's like a fucking Duragar battle platform. <laughs> 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 All right. So All right. Rewind. Backtrack. Yep. Backtrack. Back to the thing. All right. Yes, so, please. So you make camp again. Sure. More talking. <laughs> And I guess for you two, more plotting, maybe? Mm, then, uh, during the night, then, as we settle down to camp, Rhoda's well, going to look at Zed and say, hey, You're the one who's the best for this to come from. You're the spotter, as it were. Zed will not, and collect the rest of the party, like, sit around in a circle or something. And then, in sign language, making sure that it's rather hard to see from outside of said circle, will explain what he and Rillinit have thought up when they were inspecting rope. Uh, they both think that they might be being stalked by an intellect devourer, a very nasty and very intelligent beast, as seeable by the name, which takes over bodies pretty much and then has all their knowledge and all their basically yeah they they don't experience emotions which is why they take over bodies to do it basically so everyone might not be who they seem assuming that that thing has already struck or it might still strike at some point Was the person whose body has been taken over die Rillinib will, Rillin will shake his head in sign. They do technically die, however, the intellect devourer can use their bodies for its own. Eventually, the body would rot after some time, but with that body, it could do whatever sort of gluttonous or anything it desired. Hmm. They could use the body and then, after it's sufficiently rotted, discard it and go looking for another play toy. Tristan looks a little nervous and looks around. And do we know if 
Is there any way to find out if any of us are controlled? To an extent, this is why Zen and I agreed to use Drow Sign Language rather than speak in Elven. So if Tristan doesn't know Drow Sign Language, she wouldn't have any idea what's actually going okay, on right she, now. Okay, she, then she can't, she's not answering, yeah. she doesn't understand it. Uh, I really would say this was done because it was presumed even after this intellect of our might have been here for shrugs, countless centuries, thousands of years, with all of the minds and knowledge it might have gained, with us sheltered as such, it might not actually be able to read this. Like, real to gestures for Tristan, if she suddenly understood what we meant, I would stab her because she's already dead. Well, there will sign, don't tell her that. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tristan will just look confused at yeah. you all. Yeah. At any rate, given how highly intelligent these things are, and however, however much power is, yes. Under the dark lightning storm. That's perfectly fitting. That's right, yeah, under dark lightning storm, how is it? It's. Zen and I have struggled to come up with some sort of thing to lure it out. I imagine it is stalking us, and with how powerful it is, and how we eventually do rest, this thing most likely never rests. It is only a matter of time. Eleanor usually regrets killing the slaves. It's been useful this. <laughs> well, yeah, they deserved it, so. Uh. Yeah, they did serve a purpose. Like, uh, if we had left those slaves alive at all, then that one thing that was in the slave, maybe, if the intellect of ours was actually in the slave, then it would have been able to be in the entire camp, operating from within. <laughs> Tr Tristan casts a spell and looks at rain. Um, yeah. And then I'm gonna write Rain a message. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and take a wonderful spellcraft check, Jonas, in secret to determine what that spell is that she's casting, because that's kind of a big fucking deal when we're talking about Intellect Devour, DM. I, uh, I could do that as well. Yeah. In fact. Oh. Hmm. Is it roll well secret? Oh, it gone. It, so uh, Tristan casts a spell and everyone immediately looks at her and concentrates. Uh-huh. It's a... Uh, roll secret or roll, roll what? You, you can roll secret. You yeah. can like select that secret option when you press the skill check button. Uh -huh. There's a radio button that says secret. And the DC is uh, 15 plus spell level as it's being cast. I like, roll eyes of Tristan. That should do. Yeah, so, unless it's like a level 5 spell. I just sent you the message. <laughs> what, was what, that a can what, you use, by the way? What, it, what uh, spell it is? You want to uh, I don't have in my hand what level that is, but I think, you know, I'll check. <laughs> I think I can cast I can 5 spells. So. I'm oh, dominate person, you say. <laughs> oh. No, no, On no. Rain Kalar, of all things, it's like the best target, right? Mm. <laughs> yeah, the person with re-rolls and... Well, if, if she's uh, kind of you age all age recognize age. it as the uh, message. Spell. Ah, figure as much. Why? <laughs> real, real and it will sign. At any rate, it was necessary to have those slaves killed. There was no telling what that thing might have done, being in a more... Well, a better position to observe the goings of the camp instead of skulking in the shadows. There or not. Since it then would have gained all the knowledge of the slave, it would not know our, how we operate. Yes, our patterns, who ends up doing what and uh, how. Yes. What does this thing look like? <laughs> it uh, looks like, hang on. <laughs> Your fucking worst nightmare. <laughs> it looks uh, devoid of a head or any features at all, save for uh, short clawed legs. Uh, the creature's body looks like a large, glistening brain. Really, it will describe that, Dalinari. Uh, it is thought by some that they are invaders from another dimension or planet. Um, 
They uh, are considered one of the world's most cruel races, incapable of experiencing emotions or wallowing in the sins of physical pressure on their own. Therefore, intellect devourers are usually forced to steal bodies in order to indulge in their gluttony, lust, or cruelty. Stories tell of entire cities these creature, of these creatures deep underground, where host bodies are worn like clothes to hideous orgies and vile feasts. Lone intelligent devourers often dwell in ruins or caves or on the edge of a civilized region, so they can make periodic forays into town to shop for attractive bodies. And then we'll uh, then sign afterwards. Is the walking madness as it can invade host bodies, it would easily be able to turn groups against the other, thus explaining the caravan that we had seen earlier. Oh, very nice, I I'm thinking about how to... You will have to lure it out somehow, but it is supposed to be very intelligent. Indeed. Uh, with a tiny-sized creature such as that will be very difficult to spot, and it comes with its own assortment of powers, given how it must have survived out here for as long as it has, otherwise no one would fear those creatures, it might very well constantly be invisible to the naked eye, and I, even with the powers that I have, have not spotted it. Well, he's not um, used. Uh, so, here's an interesting question, which of course I'm, the DM might need to help with this. Like, um, so, how would, how would they work along with alignment detection? Because I, I have unlimited use of it, so... Uh, they, they would... Uh, well, I'm not sure. Uh, presumably it would probably detect the, uh, the uh, alignment of the... Uh, the host is dead, it wouldn't have, they wouldn't have any alignment. No, it would take the alignment of the creature, unless it is awarded somehow. Hmm. Luckily, they're probably chaotic evil, like most right. of us. But but the creatures in turn that the host body would inhabit would also likely end up being evil, which puts you back to not really being able to use that spell to detect it. I mean, if one of us die, we lose the bless. That's true. Glower at Zen. Tristan just looks very nervous around you all. She, she has no idea what we're doing, so... Well, then we'll first of all suggest that we kill anything that is currently alive that is not us, so we don't accidentally bring this thing with us to Bothus, for example. Looking at Rillanid. Rillanid shakes his head. How do you know she is not infected? because I keep her bundled up very tightly. It would be impossible, and if the Intellect Devourer had somehow gotten into my tent at night, then it would have chosen me instead of her. Well, an area not, that's a good point. No Intellect Devourer would ever pick an orc over a drow. Well, it was stupid, and then there's no threat. Yes, the stupid, stupid intellect power. <laughs> At any rate, I imagine the constant sigil carried by the group has caused it some pause and delay, but given how intelligent this thing is, the possibility that it does not need to sleep or eat other than what it wants, or it can just continue the stalking approach and will follow us, I imagine, for as long as it can. How big did you say it was? Much smaller than a gnome, like... I'm trying to think of like an Underdark example. Uh, well, you do know that they can shrink themselves in size. Like, Basically, they yeah. to the size that they can fit themselves yeah. into a body. A, at least tiny, but furthermore, they can even reduce themselves to become smaller so that they can crawl into an ear canal and take over the brain. Oh, Eleanor is sleeping in a web shelter from now on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, trap any tiny creatures in it. Mm, shit, I love it. Like a cocoon. <laughs> yeah, basically. Get, get me now. I'm wearing earplugs. You can't get in there. It's even watertight if you close it. 
Oh shit, I love it. Zombies around it. Well, I guess you could, you could like, like put it on the back of the lizard. Mm-hmm. <coughs> I don't think it can take over undead. I don't think so, no. They would be mindless. Right. Wouldn't be very nice saying that's wanting intellect. <laughs> At any rate, I don't I don't know of an exact plan as a player or as a character how to deal with this shit. <laughs> I have a lot of familiarity as a player with intellect of hours. <laughs> I don't know what to do with this. As a player, huh? Well, as, as a player as a player, yeah. I would say working under the assumption that it has not just observed us and now knows that we know that P might know. I think it what? already has some suspicions anyway. I'm working on a yeah. subject that doesn't know Drow sign language. No, that's why I agreed with that. Yeah. We should just proceed as normal and look for anything peculiar. Like, I, uh, I imagine... Like we always do. Like, weakness of some kind. Like, an opportunity for it to gain a body. Like, uh, or just like, if we somehow pretend to have been isolated... And then it could see, like, an opportunity to strike. As it must have with that human traveler we're thinking that we would need to basically create a lure in that situation and then suddenly surprise the motherfucker. Could leave shell behind some has time and somehow making it making it not have a lot of time would be good, right? So so it must hurry to Yeah. And that's the only get- thing I can think of. We would have to voluntarily create a situation in which we appear to have isolated one member of the group then we're assuming this thing is out there paying attention, it would strike then, and then we would in turn catch it by surprise and hopefully take down the bastard. Because if oh, we failed and it escaped, then it would know that. Oh, there he looks at really it. Not slowly. So someone has to be isolated, and the others have to be good distance away. That's one possible avenue of approach. It's the best idea I can come up with. I give it what it wants, and then fight the battle on its terms. It's intelligent enough, and I imagine powerful enough, and... We are in a disadvantageous position here. Oh, there he knows. How how able do you, do you think it watches us constantly? Really, the drugs. I don't know how an individual intellect devour mind works. I don't know what its purpose is. Then doesn't hesitate. Yes. <laughs> it is fair to assume, though, since I do not think such creatures need to rest, that its eyes would be on us constantly plotting. Hmm. Hmm. There's not slightly. Unfortunate. But seeing them that hiding from it would be very difficult. Hence the decision to come with the sign language in the hopes it would not be able to read this. But you all sheltered like this. Just sitting there knowing nothing. Indeed. <laughs> well, and there you should have. Uh, I think you could make illusions. and rolls his eyes up. I can't... Eh, I can make illusions of things, but they lack elements of taste or smell. However, I could create such a thing. It would be a static image. Static image of someone... resting, perhaps? Yes. Yeah. I think I'm someone resting over on the... over alone. You hear this taste or touch wouldn't be needed in the, until they very, until they got the right out. It would be initially fooled, uh, but if it had reason to suspect uh, treachery, the creature is probably savvy enough to know what an illusion looks like and would not be deceived for very long. Oh, very nice. 
basically she's thinking in the line of using if we had some way to lure it in uh, just something that alerts us to its presence would be work workable like uh, a blast glyph or something that explodes when it walks near it yeah that would work right Alarm spell? Unless it's like permanently invisible and can teleport at will, but I mean, then there's not really any chance. Elenary can't cast alarm spell, so. Mm. That might work better. I think a ranger can cast that, but that might be like. Uh, yes. Yeah. I think so. Let me check. I think it's still level 1 to work. Um, yeah. It's ranger 1. Ranger 1, inquisitor 1. 